so much of what we're taught is where all of divisiveness comes from. And if we're willing to unlearn that and really see things and really see people for who they are, life can be awesome. Life can have more beauty and more happiness and more peace than you'll ever, ever know. Today is a new day. I am Nikki G, your host. Welcome to The Lone Doctrine, a safe space to bridge the gap between your authentic self and your mental health. We are your food for thought exploration station in order to make today better than yesterday. Hello and welcome to another week of The Lone Doctrine. You are here and I am grateful. And if you are a longtime listener, I would love to hear from you. And you can leave a review on Apple Podcasts to let me know what's going on, what you want to hear, how you feel, all the good things. And if you're a new listener, welcome. We are super, super stoked to have you. And we are here talking about our topic of the month, which is bullying. It's a big topic. It is a mouthful. Now, we talked about what bullying is, why people bully, some ways to diffuse bullying in the moment and otherwise. And today, we're really going to start digging deeper and exploring on how to stop bullying. Now, I want to say I am not a professional bully diffuser, but I have been bullied. I have firsthand experience of a lot of different types of bullying. And I believe that this needs to be stopped. So we are going to explore lots of different ways that I found to try to address the issues. But all in all, if you're unsure or you feel unsafe, it is imperative that you tell someone that you go to a trusted adult or a trusted friend or a trusted coworker to resolve the issue. And if you feel really unsafe, it is also good to seek help through groups or counseling or therapy or getting yourself to a safe space. I cannot emphasize that enough. Sometimes the best thing we can do when we are bullied and when you feel it is a very dangerous situation is to get yourself to a safe space. But sometimes in life, we're given an opportunity. And when I say an opportunity, it's a place that we can try to break the cycle. It's taken me a really long time to get to this place. You might get there a little faster. You might agree. You might disagree. But some of the meanest, most rage-filled, blinded by their hate, prejudiced people who have attacked me verbally and physically, I have taken years to break down and completely change and completely have them do a 180. But it took a lot of time, a lot of patience, and a lot of strength. Because again, when someone bullies, it's saying much more about them than it is about you. They are hurting or they so are stuck. And I can say this as someone who has been there. They're so stuck in the unknown. They have a lack of resources, a lack of knowledge to understand what's scaring them, what's different what might be activating their belief system in a twisted way that they've been taught was bad, but at the end of the day, isn't really bad at all. And I've had to learn that myself. I'm about to admit to something. Before I came out as gay, I thought it was disgusting. I am ashamed to say that. But I'm telling you that I was that person. Granted, I never bullied anyone, but I had a lot of inner judgment of what I thought about same-sex couples. And that was because what I was taught, what I was taught through the church, 
and what I was taught through family. That being in a same-sex relationship was a sin, but I was denying the best part of myself. I was denying my truth so viscerally that not only did I think other people were disgusting, but I thought I was disgusting. I was forcing someone else's belief system based on false lies, whole nother topic, but it was a lack of knowledge. It was a lack of knowing that I was like my worst bully. I've been bullied in all kinds of ways. I've had rocks thrown at me. I've been called names. I've been followed to my car. God forbid, if I wouldn't have gotten in my car and gotten away, it could have been way worse by a group of men. I've been physically hurt. I've been verbally hurt. I could go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. But I'm here with you today to say that I chose to rise up. And I chose to take the time to see in every single moment if there was even just a glimmer of light, just peeking through most of the time, to see if I could help support my bully towards healing. Now, a lot of times you won't have this opportunity. A lot of times the best thing to do is to walk away because sometimes people are so immersed in their rage and so immersed in their belief system that change actually will make them more angry. But if you have the opportunity, if it's a friend, if it's a family member, and it's someone that's consistently in your life, you have the opportunity to slowly but surely plant the seeds in dissipating that fear and dissipating the hurt that's within them. Now, these are all my personal experiences. This is where I've come to as a person. And granted, I still get called names. I assess it very quickly. I don't know the person. Most of the time, it's not worth it. But there have been times where I have said, are you willing to have a conversation with me? And some people have, perfect strangers. And if I felt safe enough to do so in public around people with friends, with family, I have those conversations with those people. And it's not a magical change, but I planted a seed. I planted a seed and sometimes they come back months later years later, and it just opened the door just enough that when the next person talked to them, when they saw the next gay person, when all these different interactions happened, they viewed it just a little bit differently. And they opened up the opportunity to just grow, to realize that so much of what we're taught is where all of the divisiveness comes from. And if we're willing to unlearn that and really see things and really see people for who they are, life can be awesome. Life can have more beauty and more happiness and more peace than you'll ever, ever know. So how do we stop bullying? What are some ideas? Now, I'm going to give you some resources that I'm pulling from that may help you. And if you are being bullied, if you know someone's being bullied, if your child is being bullied, if a friend is being bullied, whatever the bullying circumstance is, it's really hard to say that word over and over again. I suggest going to all these really great resources and starting to understand more and more and more how you can make a difference and break the cycle. So here's a guide on how to deal with bullies for parents. And you can take a little tidbit in here whether or not you're a parent or not. I'm not a parent yet, but some of these things were very relatable. So from parents.com, how to deal with bullies, a guide for parents. Mean kids aren't just a middle school problem. The trouble has trickled to the youngest grades now. Learn how to spot it and how to protect your children of all ages from bullies at school. Bullies can exist in many forms. It could be physical, verbal, emotional, 
psychological rumors, conversations, or activities. And with social media, inappropriate behavior between kids can occur outside of school hours via emails, text messages, social media posts. These exchanges, known as cyberbullying, can be very hurtful and aggressive. And their harmful effects are often brought back into school the next day. So here's some ideas. Role play a what if scenario. The more you practice dealing with a bully, the less scary it is when it actually happens. Because sometimes it's out of nowhere and it takes you off guard and it feels like a personal attack, even though it's about them hurting and projecting onto you. But sometimes I know I've been just like in the moment, completely like a deer in headlights. And if you don't know that saying, I'm from the mountains. And if a deer gets in front of a light, they just stand completely still and they don't move and then nothing happens. It's the worst. So role playing the what if scenario, whether you're the parent, the child, or just someone who's being bullied is a terrific way to build confidence and empower yourself to deal with those challenges. You can role play the bully, why someone else practices different responses until they feel confident handling troublesome situations. As you role play, you teach them to speak in a strong, firm voice. Whining or crying will only encourage a bully because remember, that's what they look for. They want you to be vulnerable so they have this sense of quote unquote power. And promote positive body language. Your child, as we are young, we start to learn tricks that will make us a less inviting target. Tell your child to practice looking at the color of her friend's eyes and to do the same thing when she's talking to a child who's bothering her. Eye contact. A lot of our youth isn't used to having face-to-face interaction. That's why cyberbullying is such an issue. They're not seeing those natural human emotions. They're not seeing someone else hurt. So when we have that positive body language where we can look someone directly in the eye, it changes the way they will approach the situation. Sometimes how you look at the bully is more important than what you say. And keep an open line of communication. Check in with someone that, check in with your kids, with your friends, with your family about how things are going. Use a calm, friendly tone and create a nurturing climate so people aren't afraid to come to you when something's wrong. Emphasize that they have a safe space and a well-being that is important and that they should always come to adults to talk about a problem or you should always go to friends or you should always go to your coworkers that you can trust to stop the bullying in its tracks. Bullies have the need for power and control over others, and they have that inner desire to hurt people because they are hurt. They are hurting themselves. Hurt people hurt people. Healed people healed people. Bullies often lack self-control, empathy, and sensitivity. With that said, these strategies when dealing with bullies might be helpful. Number one, don't let a bully make you feel bad. When someone says something bad about you, Say something positive about yourself. You might feel really weird doing so, but remind yourself of your positive attributes. Tell the bully how you feel, why you feel the way you do, and what you want the bully to do. Learn to do this with a calm and determined voice. So for example, you can say, I feel angry when you call me names because I have a real name and I want you to start calling me by my real name. Don't reward the bully with tears. Granted, sometimes this can be really difficult. The bully wants to hurt your feelings. So act like his name calling and taunts don't hurt. If you feel like you're going to get hurt or you feel like something's going to go wrong, walk off with confidence. Then tell somebody what's happening. Put yourself in a safe space. Put yourself in a group of people if you have to. And don't expect to be mistreated. When walking towards a new group, think of them as being nice. And do your best to be friendly to that new group. 
Most important, treat others the way you want to be treated. Stand up for the other students who are bullied and ask them to stand up for you. When you explore this topic online, you're going to get a slew, a ton of things. There are so many different resources, some of which I've talked about in the last few episodes, some that are completely centered around bullying, which I will mention at the end of this episode. But a lot of them have the same thing, have the same approach. And so you can take what works for you and practice it, whether you're helping a child, whether you're younger, whether you can practice with an adult, whether you are an adult and you can practice with a friend. Practicing will make these scenarios less daunting and will help you get through them. And again, sometimes even if you don't have that time or that space to help that other person heal, they will move on, unfortunately. But we continue to break the cycle by diffusing the moment and lessening the power of the bully. And the best place to start is with you. As much as I wish that none of us were ever bullied, it's also really important that we're not bullying others and we're not even judging the bullies. When I say that they're hurting, I know for some of us, especially in the LGBTQ plus group, that that sounds like an excuse, but we have to start somewhere. And if we're fighting bullying with bullying, it's never going to end. Treating others as you wish to be treated is the best place to start. Whether it be teaching our child, whether it be teaching our youth and being an example of how others should be treated with kindness and respect, or just coming up with ways and finding the tools that work for you to fill your cup to be your best self, to find the healing that you deserve, to let go of the negative energy and to move towards a more positive life. When you become that positive person, you radiate out into the world and it's contagious. Your positivity, your smile, your genuine nature, your up lifting nature will become contagious and other people will want to do the same just by being you. So sometimes the best way to stop a bully begins with ourselves. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, I had to find it within myself to find the strength and the courage to approach these moments with patience, knowledge, understanding, and empathy. It takes a lot. And it's not to say that it doesn't hurt because now I have that approach, but instead of it feeling like a personal attack, I just feel sad for the other person. I feel sad for the world that we're holding so much negativity. So let's all break the cycle together. I hope that you've been enjoying these podcasts and I really hope that they've been helping. And of course, when something is really serious in your life, whether it be your mental well-being or bullies, or you're just feeling isolated and alone, I really encourage you to seek professional help. There are so many really great people and so many platforms now on the internet that are easily accessible to find and create a good support system. So remember, we explore here at The Lone Doctrine. And we explore even more on all our social media platforms such as Instagram, Facebook, and yes, TikTok. If you want to see some fun behind the scenes and some fun reminders to make today better than yesterday, I would love for you to join me. And I would also love for you to join our community at patreon.com slash loan doctrine. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash loan doctrine. We are a listener-supported podcast, and anything and everything goes a long way, and we are all so, so, so grateful. We want to continue being here for you, to be your support system, and to celebrate who you are. So, in light of Pride Month, thank you for being you, and keep fighting the good fight.